I'm actually I'm actually speaking at it later today. Oh, nice. What I mean, it seems like, like a next, my next thing after you. Feels like a rhetorical question, but what like what do they do there? Oh, um, they teach people how to become like creative directors, ad execs, stuff like that. You know, work in the commercial world. You know, develop develop campaigns. You know, the people here. You know, they want to be the next one to come up with the new campaign for Nike or something like that. Uh huh. And, and they just learn like the logistics of how to make all that's that happen. Fair, that's fair, yeah. And they bring in speakers to talk to people. So I'm here speaking with them today about the world of creativity and the convergence of the urban market into the mainstream. And what does that look like moving forward? And how does that translate into dollar value and into the global community? And, and while you do that, are you holding your Emmy? I wanted to. I totally want it. I tell that'd, be, that'd be so gangster. It just, I know exactly. I totally was thinking that. I just, <laughs> like... <laughs> just in just in case they want to ask you why they need to listen to you, you just right. you should just walk in and set it on the table. Like good good exactly. good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Don't be mad. UPS is hiring. Turn up. <laughs> now, what, what, once we officially get started, I need to be all in the business about this Emmy because you know at first I just thought it was like a Photoshop picture. I was like, what is what is this dude doing now? But you officially got an Emmy. Okay, I'll pause it right there. Officially. I need to I, I need to know about that. <laughs> Turn up. Uh yeah, so Mr. Uh Mr. Cheese is is newly employed. He's uh he was super excited. Really? Yeah, he was super excited. Uh he wanted to find a cool job. He found one. So I'm glad that he's really excited about it. Mm -hmm. So um, we got to try to figure out now a time uh, that we can do it because doing this uh, podcast with him is like, it's like the, the camaraderie, the synergy, you know what I'm saying? I mm -hmm. really like doing it with, uh, with cheese. So we gotta, we gotta figure out a way. I just, I, I love the idea of him like on the run, like he has to do it from his phone from wherever he is in that moment. <laughs> Oh gosh! I just, he, he's, <laughs> he's such a funny. I know because he's such a funny guy. So Morning, DJ he Hands. Does is funny. Uh, I, I think he would be <laughs> nervous to do it. Uh, he, I, I don't know the name of the place, uh, DJ Hams and Good Morning, but um, it, it's a hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's all I know. So and I, yeah, I, he, he'd be super nervous to broadcast from wherever he was at. Uh, <laughs> it's different. It's different. I mean, I'd imagine him sneaking out. He's like, that'd be hilarious. Mm -hmm. But as you know, it's a big difference between doing it from the comfort of your own home and then doing it on the run. Like you know, what I'm saying, if he was like a professional broadcaster, whatever. But since he is not, then nah. shout out to DJ MJ Beast, aka Mark J. Yeah. Oh, Mark J. Yeah, you logged in from your from your name account. Turn up. Currently checking out the homie Ombre the Great in the background. If you haven't uh, downloaded or streamed or listened to Beats, Blunts, and Breakups, I still highly recommend it. I've been listening to it all week. Turn up. Man, I took I took way too many notes today. Some weeks, it's almost like I can't find anything to talk about, really. And then there's other weeks, like this week, it's like this and that and that and this and this and that and that and this. Yeah, I noticed that uh, you uh, you got a lot to uh, to unpack over here. Yeah, and I added a few more notes. Oh uh, no, you added just, more. Like just from this morning. I was, yeah, I was just looking at um, some of the things on here. They're pretty uh, they're pretty intense. Yeah, it goes it goes intense and absurd. Yeah. That's kind of that's kind of where this planet is right now. Well, I guess it's always been this way, but it, it felt like this planet right now is either really intense stuff happening or it just goddamn ridiculous. It's like, come on, that's just stupid. So, that's that's the balance this morning. I, I got like four or five wash your ass, brush your teeth this morning. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. The human beings are just making a mess of this. 
And I, I think it's almost time to hit the reset button again. Here comes the flood. We got five minutes. Five minutes. Mm -hmm. We got five minutes before I drop the intro. Then after I drop the intro, then we'll go ahead and uh, get this thing started. Big shout out to everybody in the comments right now. If you'd like to go ahead and hit that share or uh, host button, it'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, Trying to have as many people join the conversation as we can. Special guest, Frederick. Sorry, that's disrespectful. Special guest, Emmy Award winner, Frederick Taylor of TomorrowPictures.tv is co-hosting for the first first hour. Cover for Mr. Cheese Leo. Uh, KK's on the way. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. We got to have some kind of stability around here. Just, just she cheese is, and I. Just one big. It's... We're gonna we're gonna get into that DJ Hams after we uh, after we drop the intro. That's like the teaser. The teasers to say that he has it. Shout out to Ombre the Great. He got the uh, he got the vaccination uh, shot and is get is kicking his ass right now. He he's feeling all the side effects of uh, oh, wow. of his shot. I was very fortunate. All it made me do was get bigger balls, and I was like, "Oh, turn up!" Yes, you were one of the lucky ones. Yeah, I was super lucky. Some of us had to live live with our packages the way that they are in nah, spite son. of the vaccine. Nah, son, I got that. I got that good vaccine. Turn up. Oh, this is dope. This is not. This is not vain or anything. Like, but we are playing on this TV behind me too. I'm like, this is cool. I'm surrounded by me. DJ Ham said he wasn't affected either. Turn up. It's hit or miss. You know what I'm saying? Either something happens or something doesn't. It's, it's basically a, another place where we are right now, too, on this planet. Hey, either something happens or it don't. Right. Yeah, I think my son. Was, the, uh... mm-hmm. My son was. A, he didn't get sick, but you know what I'm saying? He had like a little minor side effects from it. The girls took it like a champ. Nothing really happened to KK. Uh, thank you so much for the share, DJ Hams. Appreciate that. Mr. Chris Hams joining us here in the morning. Thank you for being here. Shout out to all the people who is lurking so, while uh, they're working. K- K- working while they're working. So, so KK is an advocate of the vaccine, I would assume. Yeah, because she, she's the one that led the way in our household. Because personally, I never would have got it. But she was like, we're scheduled she, to go this day. And, uh, well, that's, what I, that's why I'm asking. I'm asking. Like, I don't ask you about things like that in your household. I ask KK. Yeah. Because <laughs> if it was up to me, we would have never got it. Yeah. I, she was, But she just went and did it. And I was like, ah, oh, shit. She didn't went and did it. Now I got to go do it, too. So uh, her and the girls fun. went. And then me and Quay went the, like the next day. Mm-hmm. I some people are worried about side effects and stuff i am more than halfway past, what what do black people live to like 75 or something like that so you know what i'm saying i'm on, I'm on the, the average age is 65 yeah 65, 65 75 the I'm average age for white people is 75 is for white people oh, oh snap 65 put is with for the blacks and latinas and hey, look at you well, being, being that I don't do 100% black things, you know what I'm saying? I would put myself in between the blacks and the whites. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to get myself... Well, literally, st- well, it, 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 literally stay off the corner. Just don't no. stay on the corner. Don't drink a 40, you know. My, my fried food intake is not super high. Uh, I still don't eat meat. Um, I don't drink Kool-Aid. Uh... So I'm, I'm going to give myself those 72. So being that I give myself those 72, I'm not worried about side effects from a uh, COVID vaccine. It's like, man, I'm I'm on the, the downslide anyway. So <laughs> what does it really matter? <laughs> you should do a public service announcement. I'm on the downslide anyway. Yeah, I'm on what the downslide. What does it really matter? <laughs> Death is right around the corner. I mean, it's down the street. It's not right around the corner. I say it's down the street. You, you know what I mean? That's, that's my outlook. That's how I get things done. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, well, I better get that done before I die. So turn up. And big shout out to DJ Hams. Ooh, cat. You got 15 white years left. 
Man, if, we, if you think about it, then that's sense because he just uh DJ Hams turned 60 this year. So you got 15 white years left. Man, mm. you better so you got start five black years left. left. You got five black years left, so <laughs> watch the company you keep. Mm-hmm. And I just I just read a story last week um of how black death has gotten even shorter, like the lifespan has gotten even shorter. With uh with COVID mm-hmm. happening now, being that they're saying like a lot of the inner cities are being hit hardest by COVID, that brought their um survival rate down. Um, mm-hmm. just the ruckedness of living in the hood that brought survival rates down. Like I don't know, man. Black folk, y'all better hurry up. All right, here we go. Let me drop this uh intro, and then let's get started. <laughs> Party people, cheesy. Unique, unique. <laughs> yo, 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 it's unique and T. Here we go, here we go. It's unique and T. Let's start the show. It's unique and T. Here we go, here we go. It's unique and T. Let's start the show. Ha! That was cool, right? Yeah, that was cool. Good morning, everybody. Let me get rid of this thing right here. Get that off the screen. There we go. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Unique and Cheese Show. Thank you guys so much for being here this morning. Uh, once again, our homie Cheese got a brand new job. Shout out to Cheese with his brand new job. Turn up. Got a brand new job. Congratulations to him. So stepping it in for, for, for Cheese on this first hour is our brother, Mr. Frederick Taylors of tomorrow. Sorry. Damn it. I'm so disrespectful. Emmy Award winning Frederick Taylor of TomorrowPitchers.tv. Turn up is in the building. I wanted to give a second for KK to join us. I don't want you to have to explain twice what you wanted for, but you know what I'm saying. Please, inquiring minds. Right. right. I, um, and, a I third, and a third. third. Inquiring minds want to know how would you get an Emmy yes. for Frederick Taylor? You've been holding out. You ain't sharing everything you're doing, Frederick Taylor. Come on, come on. Let's talk about this Emmy. Well, you, well, well, yes. <laughs> I lost your sound. Still got no sound from Frederick Taylor. No sound from Frederick. It will air. And then it went away. There it is. Now you back. Turn up. Can you hear me now? We can hear you now. Turn up. All right. Great. Okay. I'm here. All right. Welcome back. So this Emmy, when you go on dates, I know all the times so you show up, you put it on the table. Like, what's up? I'm Frederick Taylor. I got an Emmy. How you doing today? I am well, thank you. Um, I appreciate the... Uh, the accolades, the respect, the shout outs, all that fun stuff as well. Um, the Emmy is through, um, well, you'll love this part. It's uh, out of California and it's through the PBS affiliate in San Francisco, KQED. What turns mm-hmm. that particular uh, PBS affiliate so special is that they have been in the social justice and civil rights game since the 60s. They have programs that they used to do with people like James Baldwin. Um, which is pretty Shut fascinating. Up. They were one of the first PBS affiliates to to chronicle the gang situations in uh, California, dating back to the late 1950s. Word uh, as well. So it's an honor to be a part of the, K- the KQED family. It comes honestly. So they have a television series uh, called If Cities Could Dance, and If Cities Could Dance is a uh, show, an anthology series about people in dance troops all over the country. And so last year they wanted to highlight the dance uh, in Atlanta through this new form of dance of urban street dancing called J setting. And, J uh, setting. J setting, uh, awesome stuff. I mean, a combination of, you know, modern dance, um, hip hop break, um, step, HBCU step and uh, HBCU majorette dancing as well. Um, the other interesting aspect about this is that it's um, very much has emerged through the LGBTQ community as well. 
So these are young black men that are a part of an alternative lifestyle community. So it has a um, gender fluid aspect to it as well. Um, uh -huh. So it challenges you on so many different levels beyond just the dance. Um, this particular form of artistic expression is political and uh, certain people love it and other people are still trying to unpack it and figure it out, um, which is pretty exciting. We need more things like this as well. So mm -hmm. I got the pleasure and the honor of being able to chronicle these young men and we won an Emmy. Word. As soon as you said it, I had to go online and try to YouTube some, uh, oh, there you some go. Jay said it. Is this like the, uh, let me see here. Well, this is, this is the entire, so this is it. I think this is, uh, yeah, this is it. Yep. That's it. So it's highlighting, you know, um, Atlanta, it's highlighting them as dancers. Their costuming is, uh -huh. harkens back to things from the seventies, like disco. Um, but at the same time too, once again, gender fluid, uh -huh. you know, there is no specific identity as far as gender, just people or people. And these, these individuals are, these are terrific dancers. And these are dancers that are also classically trained as well. I mean, they do everything. They do ballet. You can you see, know, yeah. Steps are all original and, oh yeah. Like these, these, these kids, uh, know what they're doing. Now, is there, is, are, is there like a uh, particular J setting music or they J, J set to uh, anything? There is, you, you're going to find this to be really exciting. There is J set music that's been coming out of the South. That's kind of, uh, an answer to trap music. It's really? kind of, yeah. And we should talk about this more later. Um, it's an entire genre of music Word. that comes out of like, you know, Alabama, Louisiana, and Mississippi, you know, but it's not trap. It's not hip hop. It feels more like high energy, old school disco mixed with trap and hip hop. Really? But it's still very urban. Yeah. It's still morning black, uh -huh. but it's not, yeah, but it's, it's not, um, uh, it's not it's not hip hop and it's it's not trap. It's it, its, its own else. thing. And I'd be is, down to try to get into some J setting thing music. And it's I I would love for you to be down for getting into some J setting music. I think that there is tremendous opportunity in this particular genre. And with this particular piece, we are just scratching the surface. I think it's a movement, if you ask me. Um, and I, I think that if the people that have started this have the potential to really blow up and uh, get people involved, it's infectious. I mean, they're already like putting dance moves online and like, you know, hundreds and thousands of people are following them just to be able to learn the dance moves. Um, and these, and these dances, like these dances have names like this is the Bukabaka and this is like the Nukanaka. Like, is it is it that formatted? Like or are they, they are they freestyling yeah, they have, the whole time? It's that for but it's 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 no they're not they're not freestyling. This is this is all rehearsed. This is all syncopated. Everything has a specific name and category uh, as well, and um, they don't share it. Like the hip hop community, the trap community has been trying to like steal their dance moves, and they really, don't like they are under, so, uh, under lock and key. So KK, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Freddie is telling us about what he won an Emmy for, uh, and then him uh, telling us about what he won an Emmy for. We are learning about J setting, which is a music. Um, sorry, a genre of is is a genre of dance. Yes. Or is it is just a whole movement? Is J setting just a whole movement, or is it just the dance? It's a whole movement. It's, it's a whole it's, movement. There's more it's, than the, it's all of the above. It's the, it's the dance, it's the movement, it's the music, it's the clothing, the fashion, the the, the gender uh, fluidness of it as well. So it's not uh -huh. it's not male and it's not female. It's Word. fluid. And it's really the first type of artistic expression that has come out unapologetically fluid as well. And once again, and, you know, so, and, you know, um, KK can speak to this as well. So many innovative things with art and culture come out of communities of color in America as well. There's a certain fearlessness to being a person of color in America where you're just going to put it out there and let the chips fall where they may. And this Word. is another 
uh, type of influence, you know, similar to the early days of, you know, jazz and blues and, and, and hip hop and soul and gospel, all the other stuff. This is something else that is urban that has its own thing. It's not Word. like anything else. And we're long overdue for another um, creative urban movement in America. 100%. With all due respect to hip hop, it is long in the two. Yeah. 100%, 100%. And I'm I'm 1,000% always behind any new movement i mean any new movement that has to do with dancing you know what i'm saying so the fact yeah. that they are centered in in it and is really driving them for dancing especially coming from a, a dj's point of view this is exciting to me because you know yeah, all the standing hot. around on couches at the clubs that's not fun to me but to have people come out yeah. and really be about their craft and, and going in like yes whew, let's go yes Exactly. So I'm going to send you some tracks and stuff like that as well. Let you listen to them. We should talk about it. I didn't want to talk to you about this anyway. Um, in moving forward and creating and developing more music within this uh, genre uh, space. Is, is, uh, so so did you so what did you do with this uh, with this project? You shot it, uh, edited it. Like what did Tomorrow Pictures have to do with uh, with that project? Um, I I directed it and shot it, and then um, KQED in San Francisco they edited it, they put it together. Word. But I ended up shooting a, t a ton of stuff. What's in the award winning piece is the tip of the iceberg of what I've already captured, and what the guys are committed to with me working with them moving forward. Um, you know, there's a lot of things there that are identifiers from a cultural standpoint. Uh, the uh, the leader of them is a guy by the name of Leland, and Leland's originally out of Detroit, um, and I'm out of Chicago. So Leland and I have a lot in common. Leland's part of the LGBTQ community, and my favorite uncle, my mother's brother, was a part of the LGBT community as well. And he was a dancer. He was a soul trained dancer. Um, nice. That's what he went to California, being a soul trained dancer in that sort of Jermaine Stewart, Jody Watley era. There's a mm -hmm. bunch of South Side of Chicago people that went to LA back in the day. And he was a part of that movement, which was a big dance movement as well, as you as you know, historically. So, uh, you know, you, myself, you know, we have a lot in common with these guys as well. Um, and then they have their own universe where they are gender fluid as well, mm -hmm. which makes it even more fascinating. You know, they tell really funny stories about their lives and how they deal with things, the police, other people, stuff like that. So uh -huh. it's cool. Word. Now, uh, what what does uh, the J setting like? What does that? What is what is the meaning behind J setting? Why why the name J setting? What um, what is that? It's, what is it's that? It's named is that, after. It's in the kitchen. Um, oh, it's the dog drinking it, water. It. it it, it, it comes out of um, the HBCU school system of, of dance is where it originally uh, comes from. Mm. And so uh, it was something that just started on college campuses. And it just has grown from there, um, which is kind of fascinating. So it was really, you know, HBCU step shows and, you know, dance moves uh, from the bands. Uh, all that like battle of the band stuff at HBCU school mm -hmm. as well, all those like different steps that they use and that's how it started. And from there it grew into, um, you know, merging itself with other forms of urban dance as well. Word. Now, do they have like J, J setting battles and uh, like, you know what I'm saying? Like yes. Competitions? Yes. Yes, they are. Yes, they are unbelievably competitive, like beyond anything you could you could imagine you know they're intense um yeah. i wouldn't i wouldn't compete in on any level uh with them well i've never seen you dance before can you dance yes i can dance and I, just so I, you I, let's listen to you oh, you're such a hater <laughs> <laughs> and you're such a hater. I'm gonna send you a video. I'm gonna send you a video. Um, okay, but uh, the, the J and J setting comes from an HBCU school um, in Louisiana, Jackson State. Uh, currently, former NFL great Deion Sanders is the football coach at Jackson State. So Jackson State is where J setting was invented. 
And Jackson State is also the um, epicenter of the civil rights movement for protest in the HBCU academic school system from half a century ago. You know, there were these other big white schools that were doing all these protests 50, 60 years ago. Where that was happening on black campuses started at Jackson State. Um, and there was a, there's actually a famous shooting of Jackson State students by police like in 1970, 71 or whatever. Um, Walter Payton, the football legend, went to Jackson State. Jerry Rice, the football legend, went to Jackson State uh, as, as well. So it's a it's a famous school in the HBCU folklore. Word. Um, oh, that question slipped me. Not, not gonna. Okay. So is this is this being like um, broadcasted and documented down in the South too? Because I saw that you know you said out of San Francisco, they're the ones that uh, put it on air. But are are they getting the same attention and love down south also with the uh, J Step movement? S slowly it's it's happening um the south is a little bit more rigid uh socially and politically as you already know but it's also very rigid artistically they don't like to move off a spot you know what i mean it's like they settle into one thing and you know this as a as a music artist and they just keep doing the same thing over and 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 over again and they don't evolve they don't go into a they don't take a risk or a gamble or a chance but I'm I'm 50 yes. 50 on that because from the same place that gave you like Outkast and Dallas Austin and Jermaine Dupri, like you know those are all different sounds and different movements coming out of that True. one place. So I I, I would assume that they would be more open. I would too, but I, I'm gonna have to say I don't know, and mm -hmm. leaning more towards the no. Um, they do their thing the way they do their thing. I mean, Dallas now is getting more involved in the uh, in the tech industry, and Jermaine is spending way too much time in Vegas. Gotcha. <laughs> so, you know, as a as a resident DJ, which I think Word. is a misuse of his talents. You know, and should they be on top of this stuff? Absolutely. Um, you can Word. throw the Dungeon family into that category as well. I mean, why? There's a lot of people, and then um, you know. Um, a Akon's company, Icon, as well. I mean, there's a lot of people that are swinging and missing on this mm -hmm. in the dirty south. And I'm surprised. And I think one of the reasons that they are is because they're afraid of the LG LGBTQ aspect of this. They are, you know, they are that afraid they, you, you, there is a certain amount of cultural convergence with the gay community that they're just not ready for. Word. So do you, you think know, an artist like um, like uh, Lil Nas X, if they threw him on a J, a J stepping yes, track? Would yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. 100, 100. Yeah, exactly. Mm. You know, and that's the kind of person's radar you want to you want to get on or, you know, a Beyonce. You know, Beyonce, Beyonce has experimented in this space of, yeah, of majorette marching dancing and urban street dance. You know, uh -huh. she's brushed up against it a few times. I think if, you know, people were able to position themselves properly within her camp, they could get something done as well. But this is where we are. I mean, one of the things that's so important, especially post pandemic, is our ability to market ourselves and market who we are and what we do. And not enough people, especially urban people, do that. Because um, people talk about how the, the Korean pop movement has done so well. And I think one of the biggest reasons is because they just know how to market. They know how Word. to get out there and get it in front of you. And a very where polished a, lot, a lot of the urban people are dropping the ball is that they're not. Yeah, exactly. Urban people aren't marketing themselves well. They're too busy putting their like foot in their mouth like the baby. You know, that's not good press. Word. That's bad press. And not all um, press is necessarily good. You know, you do want to have some things that are positive, you know, and the baby should spend less time being homophobic and he should be spending more time like getting on this j setting thing like he just it, it's it, literally a perfect example of he's making the wrong move I, and, and i'm glad you brought that up because that was one of the uh i guess one of the craziest things that happened this week um and i guess this is where my ignorance comes in a little bit uh because i was actually watching his performance uh in real time as it was happening and I thought his call to action mm. was it was it was a whack call to action. Like, you know what I'm saying? You, we could be more creative than that if you don't have AIDS, put your lights on your phone. Like, you know what I'm saying? We just, we just 
we could be way more creative than that. But I didn't see that as an attack on the gay community because everybody can get AIDS. Everybody can get STDs. No, I, I, so I, I didn't see it as being like homophobic. Like, oh, he hates gay. It's an, it's an attack on intellectualism. And, you know, uh, KK can jump in at any time. And uh, I know that she has a sensibility about intelligence and that she has an expectation of people to be their, their best selves intellectually. And this is an example of him being misinformed before he opens his mouth. And there's a certain amount of understanding and research and homework we should do as artists that are outward reaching in the community before we start talking. That's the problem. It's just that he just Word. sounds so ignorant and he's playing into this sort of cultural discourse that, you know, all black men are not very smart and we can't keep taking these hits all the time in public forums. You know, we need people of color that are men that, you know, think before they uh before they talk that's the part of the problem so uh speaking of black men um what happened to the other black man that was on this call he just ran away my wife i think closer to the computers acting silly oh that's hilarious. yeah so he and, and, that, and that's what away. i'm saying his his uh his his the, the call to action was just it was lazy that that's what exactly. i mostly and saw we can't out afford of that so, yeah, no, it was it was it was very you lazy. Know, like eight, you know what I'm eight saying? Eight years Even of the, Obama and Michelle, like, you could be on top of these things. Go ahead. But I'm just saying, even the you know, for all, all the ladies, if you if your if your vagina's clean too, it's like that that that's not a call to action. You know what I'm saying? No, it's not. Um, it's not. But then, and no disrespect to it's the what audience, you're supposed to do. but <laughs> right, <laughs> and and no disrespect to that audience, but. The majority of Rolling Loud audience is young knuckleheads. You know what I'm saying? We and we have to have that time in our life when we're young knuckleheads. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I'm not going to expect to see very many responsible adults uh, in the pit of uh, a Rolling Loud concert. You know what I'm saying? Um, and is by no chance given any excuses. Yeah. But I think he, I think he thought he was playing to the level yeah. uh, of the crowd, and I just, I, I thought it was lazy. It, it, yeah, it was, but, but moving forward, we need to start to have, you know, these artistic music symposiums that do have intelligence in them. I want to go Word. to music shows where the people there are intelligent and the people up on stage are intelligent and thoughtful. I'm yeah. tired of going to these other places where everybody's an idiot and I'm supposed to give them a pass. I don't want to go. I don't want to do it. I don't want to be a part of it. I'm not interested in their movement, and I'm not interested in what the baby has to say about anything. And it's in poor form for him not to apologize. Just apologize. And Even if you don't believe it or you don't think you were wrong, just apologize yeah. because it is the correct thing to do as far as social etiquette is concerned. Word. You know? And, uh, and he, that was the, he doesn't even get that. He does, but then that what was a conversation. Uh -huh. Sorry. I was just saying that was a conversation that uh, that James and I were having yeah. or, or Cheese and I were having was that what happens at Rolling Loud, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I guess because they broadcasted it, it seemed like it was for everybody, but it was for Rolling Loud. Like, I can't imagine going to Rolling Loud and having a good time. Like, that is just not my demographic of entertainment. You know what I'm saying? Even if I'm spending some of those artists' music, I don't want to be there. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't mm -hmm. expect a whole lot coming from there. Now, the places that you're talking about that you would want to go to, that's where I would want to go to. And that's where I would hold those artists more responsible uh, because that's why I chose to come see you because I would expect you to not say these things. What what the baby said right. is not, like, it blew my mind. Like, oh, I can't believe he said that. No, nah, I can believe he said that. I, I, I hear his music. And that's exactly what it sounds like something he would say. Mm. It's not a shock. And, you know, and, and, you know people are going to continue to, to patronize that. Go ahead. I think it has to do with Go ahead. that Go ahead. type of mentality that allows so much wrong to happen. Everybody should be responsible. Just because you're rolling loud, I know nothing about rolling loud. But yet, yeah, there has to be some type of a level that you have to keep. You have to have mm -hmm. some type of care, respect, you know, those people mm -hmm. while 
you might have that mentality, those people bring their friends. There might be parents that might want to check it out. Whatever the situation, like why do you insist on keeping at that level and while it's not being kept up at that level, it's being dropped, these people are behaving in a manner, they're like, oh, we're at this place, we can do whatever we want. And then they start, you know, being catastrophic. No, those people go to the concerts that you want to go to also. And while they behave, their behavior from same as rolling loud, well, you're saying, oh, you're not supposed to do that. Now you want to, you know, regulate? No, you regulate over here and regulate over there too. It might be a little more regulations here, but you can't say, hey, one place it is expected. No place it is expected that you are a racist, that you are biased, that you are attacking somebody. Nowhere it should be allowed. Right. I think exactly. that's why. Exactly. Because imagine if we say things. Yeah. Go ahead. So I'm just saying, like, because you say it's okay in one area, that it happens everywhere. These people who's, who thinks it's only okay. No, just because it's only allowed here. These people don't know that. They know that, oh, I can get away with this here. And that's who becomes the ones who ruin the fun for everybody else. And then you're going to try to teach them. But no, they're going to be like, well, I was able to do that here. And I got away with it over there. And I did it over there. Like, who the heck are you? They're going to challenge because now they've gotten away with everywhere else. Now, you're the only one who's picking on me. So it's your fault. We can't have rules anymore because of those people who think everything is beneath them. They have no respect. They have no care. And they have their exactly and they and they have their audience. So this is almost similar to like a a stand up comedian being at a a stand up comedian place and he's doing his jokes at the stand up place. And then somebody hears the jokes outside of that place. And now they're condemning the place where people went to hear that because, okay, now this is where we have the, uh, the, the, the problem with freedom. You know what I'm saying? People have the freedom to make the choices that they want to make. You know what I'm saying? And you, the rest of us can't tell another group of people, you can't say, or you can't do that to the, when they're with people that they can say and do that stuff with. Because just as much as you don't want to be censored, they don't want to be censored. Right. And and, and in a way, I'm not defending defending anybody. I'm not defending anybody. All I'm saying is that once somebody has the freedom to be able to say something, uh, somebody else with the same freedom can't tell you can't say that. Yeah. We have a social They're contract. Saying things that they social can't contract say. is like, don't yell fire in movie theater. Yeah, and we need to respect people. And like, so what if we decide on your TV, on your show, we're gonna trash the baby every week. We're gonna make fun of him. We're gonna talk about him. We're gonna talk about his family. Talk about his mama. Put him down. You know, say that he's ignorant. He's stupid. He's not very smart. I wonder what his SAT scores were in high school. We go and we get his um, grades from high school. We beat him on air. You know, we embarrass him. He would get turned. He would be upset. Right, he would probably yeah. try to say something or step to us, and, and his feelings would be hurt. You know, and then he would know how it feels. You know what I mean? Since it's freedom, I have the right to trash him. I have the right to mm. say whatever I want to say about him. I have the right to th- say that he's a bleep ass bleep if I want to. What's he mm. going to do? That's my right. You know? And what he doesn't understand is like he might get so mad that himself or one of his boys might roll up on me. So what if some people from the LGBT community roll up on him? They stop him in a parking lot one night and they say, yo, man, we don't appreciate the way you what you said. They like, say what you said. And say. then got a turf war. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's the that's the film short that we create where, you know, these guys you know, from the LGBTQ community roll up on them and like drop them in a parking lot. Yeah. You know, what if, what if, you know, people from that community just started going on a, on a, on a beat down spree for everybody right. that says something about their community, you know, fair is fair. You know, he does this with the assumption that no one, there's no reprisal, no one's going to hit back. Mm-hmm. You know, he's going after what he, he per- perceives it to be a defenseless community. Oh, nobody cares about them anyway. He's just picking on them. 
Mm-hmm. He's a child. He's a, he's a child. Hence, he's called the baby. And you're right. He is playing <laughs> there now. He is. One hundred percent. He is on. He's on brand. You know, and he just might as well continue to double down on this and just keep getting in the news and insulting people who are defenseless. It really feels like that's what he's doing because even yeah. his apology yeah. is like not even an apology. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like, well, yeah. yeah, I said that, but that's not what I was talking about. I was talking not them gays. I'm talking about them gays. It's like, whoa! It's like yeah. one of those when you hear somebody, it's like, just stop right. talking. He's like, Talking. Yeah, he's your ignorant black uncle. <laughs> yeah. Like, you're, you're a little tone deaf, bro. I don't think you know what's been going on for the past uh, 15, 20 years, but uh, the, t- the radio station has been changed. So, uh, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And that's a shame that he's that ignorant, you know. And it's an, it's an indictment against our educational system. He was brought up wrong. He's taught wrong. And that's a shame. You know, but I when they go back and interview his teachers, what if they shocked him? Was like, actually, he's really intelligent. It's unfortunate that he's saying the things that he's saying, but the guy's really smart. I mean, because uh, especially yeah, if you put it on a level insecure. of in this capitalistic country that we live in called America, he would be considered successful. Here's a person that had an idea to do something, followed all the way through with it, and made it to the highest level that you can get to doing that yep. thing. So in America, he's a success story. Absolutely, and and look at where we were for the past four years with that type of mentality. You know, it almost like ran this country into a ground. You know, debate should run for political office. He'd probably win. He'd probably win. That's what. <laughs> what do you mean, the president? Oh my God! Dude, dude. Running in the Republican Party. That would be hilarious. But that's, but, but I know, but that's an interesting point because think about the numbers of rappers that have, were supporting the Republican Party over the past four years. It was scary, you know, from from Kanye to, to Cube and a lot of other people too, just defending that type of mentality. I was shocked. I was shocked, you know. But once again, it's black men behaving badly and it's making black men look bad. So it's difficult to be a decent black man. I mean, like black women don't even take black men seriously anymore. It's crazy. I, I spend my, a lot of time defending myself and my character and who I am as a person. You know, they're dragging us down. Ooh. And I'm tired of it. You know, I long for the days of some black male intellectualism of the past. You know, I'm so sorry John Lewis is gone. <laughs> well, there, there are some uh, there are some uh, black men out here who are definitely oh, sure. killing the game. Yeah, so let me uh, exactly let me share one. Yeah. This one is a, yeah. a a new movie coming out about two black men killing the game. Mm-hmm. What's going on? Everybody okay? They got a call, said there was trouble in the house. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, you all need to look around. It's a little wet for practice, don't you think? Don't the girls have schoolwork to do? They do their homework. Tundi's first in her class. Lynn and Isha are too. Now, I don't even mind you saying we hard on these kids. You know why? Because we are. That's our job, to keep them off these streets. You want to check on the kids? Let's check on the kids. We got future doctors and lawyers plus a couple tennis stars in this house. The chances of achieving the kind of success that you're talking about, it's just very, very unlikely. Okay, you're making a mistake, but I'm gonna let you make it. Watch me hit a few balls. All right. So tell me your names again. I'm Venus. I'm Serena. So what'd you think? I wrote me a 78-page plan for their whole career before they was even born. Yeah, baby, yeah! <laughs> These girls are so great, how come I've never heard of them? They're from Compton. It's okay. They're just not used to seeing good-looking peoples like us. She's nervous. Take a step up. Maybe she ought to take a few more steps up. Just get someplace safe. I think you might just have the next Michael Jordan. Oh, no, brother man. I got me the next, too. This next step you got to take. You're not going to just be representing you. You're going to be representing 
every little black girl on earth. They're not going to let you down. How could you? This world ain't never had no respect for Richard Williams, but they're going to respect y'all. You don't walk out there with your head up. You are a champion, and the whole world knows it. The most dangerous creature on this whole earth. It's a woman who know how to think. Yes, Daddy. Ain't nothing she can't do. You gonna show them how dangerous you are? Yes. Venus and Serena gonna shake up this world. Venus Williams, who is your best friend? You, Daddy. Serena Williams, who is your best friend? Venus. Then you. That's then you. After Venus. That looks incredible. Oops. It's long overdue. You know, I think so too. It's, it's well, I think it's right on time. How long it takes for these stories to really interesting. I would say that it's could have been done sooner. I think so too. Yeah. And I think it's just emotional watching the preview. But I yeah. wonder while Richard was working to be the, I guess, the ass of the situation in the beginning because he was so hard. I bet he had the backup. His wife was probably right behind him. As much as she's doing, she probably did not stop him from doing what he had planned for his children. I feel like in my life, you know, I want to create better. I want to do, I found to be very harsh, very driven when it comes to my kids. But my partner, on the other hand, wasn't so driven. So I feel, you know, it's very emotional because like, wow, I want that. <laughs> I could have that. I, well, I, I think the most amazing thing about that with him, uh, one thing that we didn't have, there, there was no, like, he already knew what the finish line was. And if you know what a finish line is, then you know where you're pushing to get it. If you just have an idea like, oh, it'd be nice if this, or, oh, it'd be nice if that, that's different than I got a 75 page plan that I wrote down before my daughters were even born. That's to him. And also, uh, was it LeVar, LeVar Ball, the, the ball dad? Like also, like they had like a specific plan yeah. before they even gave birth to those children. I, I think that's incredible that any human being can be that detail oriented and, and work a plan like that. Yeah, well, you know, he comes from a different era. Um, you know, my grandmother was like that. Um, my grandmother left the Deep South and she had grown up picking cotton and things like that. And she developed a plan for herself that got her to college. And before she had even had my mom, she was mapping out the plan for what her grandkids were going to do with their lives. That's dope. And I am that grandchild. I mean, my grandmother manifested that when I eulogized her at her funeral, I talked about that, that everything that I am that people would see is because she dreamed it first. And that's how you get out of slavery. That's how you get out of oppression. You know, for so many cultures and so many uh, people, you know, KK's culture included, you know, we have ancestors that have dreamed us into existence. This is a particular film that is now bringing that type of discourse to light for other cultures or other people who don't know that. Because in these other colonial cultures, their destinies are preordained. They know what they're going to have. They have family wealth. They have endowments. They have opportunities and things like that. You know, did your grandmother? Uh, uh, hmm? Did your grandmother tell you like that you was my you was, this yeah. was I, I planned for you doing it? Like, yeah. That's dope. That's dope. Yeah, she told me. Um, I was by the time I uh, I was in adulthood, you know, and at times when I felt down or defeated or beaten, I mean, you go through a lot as a person of color. That realization that you're different and the way you are different is not good enough for the status quo and that you have to work harder, you know, and the ridicule that you get and the shame that is put upon you just for being the way that God made you, 
Mm-hmm. And it was my grandmother was the one that always stepped in and said, you are wonderful. You are great. You are beautiful. Who's your best friend, little Freddie? And it's like, it's my grandma, that's my best friend. You know, like that, that type of rearing is um, and like KK said, it's, it's emotion. It's, it's like the emotion for, for me is that, you know, for some of the other people who don't know about that deep part of being ethnic. They just love, oh, Serena and Venus, they're famous tennis players. That's so amazing and wonderful. They're paying attention to the fact Will Smith's in it and, you know, the music and it's swelling and stuff like that. But like for me, it's those intimate moments. Like when someone had had took time with me as a young kid of color, it made all the difference in the world. And that's why every kid of color that I run into, like I take my time as much as I can. You know, I don't walk past anybody. You know, because I understand how important that is. There's this great story about uh, Malcolm X. You remember Yafet Koto? He was an actor. He just died last year. Um, big dark skin guy. And, um, he met. Um, he was in. He was an alien. He was in. Um, yeah. Yes. One yes. of those police shows uh, back in the '90s. Yeah, and like big burly guy, like you know. I know you're talking but, about. Um, he always thought of himself as not a very attractive person, and he ran into he w- ran into Malcolm X on the street in the early 1960s, and Malcolm X walked up to him and said, "You are beautiful, exactly the way that you are, and don't ever forget that." And that changed his life, and he went on mm-hmm. to become, you know, Yafet Koto, the the actor as well. You know, so that interaction is, I think, is what's important in that trailer that I saw, that a father taking time with his daughters, you know, and his children. And I really love the uh, you know. morning young one. I I, I love the uh, the interaction, and I I, I really love the uh, the just the, the planning of it. You know what I'm saying? Coming from a winged family, you know what I'm saying? I, I came from a very winged family. A winged. I said I came. I'm saying I came from a winged uh, type of family. You know what I'm saying? And to see that there's actually people that get detailed, like you know what I'm saying, they're gonna wear purple shoes when they're 13 years old. Like you know what I'm saying? I think that's incredible. I think that's incredible. I'm not envious of it, but it is right. inspiring. And that's unusual. Oh yeah, Richard Williams is an anomaly in comparison to a lot of other ethnocentric households. You know most people of color, they do wing it, you know, but um, he was out there making plans and that's what made him a visionary um, ahead of his time. Mm-hmm. You know, he needs to bottle it and turn it into a book and a formula for success and sell it. You know, he's, he's, he's onto something, but that's the kind of thing in the world he came from, a brilliant man like him is not going to be accepted by the status quo. He has to put all of his energy into his daughters. That's the only way he can have a legacy. Mm-hmm. You know, we're just so blessed that we can go out and do it on our own. My grandmother said that to me. She's like, you're the first person in the history of our family that gets up every day and does whatever he wants to do and doesn't work for somebody else. That had to make her feel so you good. Know, that's incredible. And when I, oh my God, because she knows what it's like to get up every day and go pick cotton for somebody else. You know, that was my grandmother. And then her grandparents were slaves, Mm -hmm. were born into slavery, you know. So that's a phenomenal leap. I mean, this this colonialist practice that we've been living under for hundreds of years has really set us back as people. And we fight to the nail to just crawl to the point of being equal. And it's a tough, it's a tough con. And that's why, like, you know, the baby, I want to punch him in the face. (laughs) <laughs> because we don't have time to be slowed down by dudes like him. You know, we need more King Richards and less of these. Word. And it, and it, and I don't think it's, there's a system behind keeping the babies relevant and keeping the babies, you know what I'm saying, in everybody's face all the time. He, it ain't him by himself. There's a whole machine behind him that keeps him no, talking it, about exactly. smashing oh, bras and kinds shooting of people. And, they, they, you know, and the system looks the other way, you know, he can, the system doesn't care, you know, the system's not into it, you know, of course not. the system is promoting him. care less about who he insults as long as he makes money. And the second he doesn't make money, yep. they'll, they'll come up with some charges against him and he'll go to jail and he'll never be heard from again. 
Yep, and they'll you just know? get another. They'll get the uh, whatever's next, the the toddler, the embryo, the, the exactly. semen. Like, next, yeah, next, exactly. Next fool up. Next fool up. Well, I want to give a big shout out to uh, Sunisa Lee for winning the all around gold for the U.S. at uh, at the Tokyo Olympics. Um, the young 18 year. I didn't know she was just 18. At just 18 years old, she won the all around. Uh, congratulations to her. I think she was battling with a young lady mm-hmm. from Brazil. Uh, and then she ended up killing. I watched her. Uh, what is the balance beam routine? And I was just watching it in awe. Like, I can't believe a person can do that. When she hit the backflip, backflip, then she did like a front flip thing. And then her dismount to get off that jump off. I was like, oh, shit, son. That was dope. And I don't know nothing about gymnastics, but I know that what I yeah. saw was incredible. It was it was it was dope. So uh, shout out to her. Shout out to Simone Biles oh, yeah. also. Um, I don't know if she's going to do any of the individual, um, whatever they call it. Um, what do they call she it? She says individual she may. Things. Individual competition. Yeah. <laughs> she says she may, uh, but they haven't decided completely yet. What do you Word. think about Freddie, the twisties that uh, they are dealing with right now apparently that is what they are calling it the psychological mental issue mental issue that they're having Probably yeah they named it twisties 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 because yeah which, which isn't yeah it's yeah um, because they, it's you know they they in a physical sense they're always contorting their bodies but what they're letting you know is that the body is connected to the mind as you know, gay gay. And I think that it does take its toll. And it, it does wear them out and wear them thin. And we didn't have a discourse in our society before where they were allowed to express themselves if they were feeling pain or anguish or anxiety. Mm-hmm. We now have forums in our society to discuss that and they're taking full advantage of it. You know. We all experience and have the twisties. They're just bringing it out into the open and saying like, hey, I want to talk about this. The problem is, is that the powers that be make a lot of money off them and they get mad because they're like, wait a minute, mm-hmm. you got to get out there and do your thing so I can make this money. You know, you got to show yep. up. Shut you up know, and dribble. Just, right. right, because the TV advertisers, they're there in Tokyo because they need Simone out there because that's how they're selling McDonald's. Mm-hmm. And if Simone's not out there, then people are turning it off and they're like, eh, they're not watching it. And so they're not watching the advertising and with less viewership, less ad dollar. It's just money. And so that's why people have a problem with it. But I think it's completely and totally legit, you know, and we don't listen to these kids enough about what they go through and all of the emotional trials and tribulations of being successful at such a young age. You know, when I was their age, I was throwing up into a wastebasket in my dorm room. <laughs> Word. You know, I wasn't doing anything that was that productive in that way, in that sense. You know, and so they have a, they're under a lot of undue and unfair pressure. And at the same time, too, we're just into the generation in America where, you know, African American girls and Asian American girls and Latina American girls can actually compete in gymnastics and be heralded as great. Word. That's only in our generation. Before that, those those girls weren't even allowed to be on the team. They couldn't be on the team. That was crazy. You what know? else was crazy is how she said so, that so um, it was it was unbelievable. Well, in at just what is she 22, 22 years old, Simone Biles. 24. 24 and she says she's just getting to the point where she's realizing that she's more than a gymnast i'm like wow that's how much like that's a lot of pressure yeah, because she's been, to know that she, yeah she, she's been programmed and now she's programming herself she's Word. growing up and that's a, a conversation i she had with a, a friend of mine with uh, for me to say she's where for what uh, DJ MJ Beast is saying, uh, I, had a, I had a conversation with a friend and we were talking about how it seems like people who don't accomplish anything have the most to say. And I don't understand why they're why they're given a platform that people actually, uh, you know, pay attention to it and put weight behind. It's like you can't do what she does on your on your best day. So you should not be able to be able to comment on if she's like, I, I can't do this or uh, I'm, I'm tapping out. It's, it's like, but this is the discourse of our society when it comes to how we treat ethnic people and people of color. 
the people that are less are the ones that are telling us we have to do more all the time. And we have assumed this role as slaves in this country or as immigrants from Asia or as immigrants from Latin America, where the only way we can be here is if we do stuff twice as good and then we're rewarded with half as much. Hmm. And we get very little of the respect and credibility that we deserve and people expect us to continue to play this role and live in this lane and we're done and we're exhausted and we're moving on from it. Word. I mean, the bottom line is, is that athletes of color everywhere should say, hey, we got the twisties, we're not doing this for a minute. Y'all need to treat us better. That would shut it down. Word. You know, that's the, that's the problem. I'm all for this, you know. But I, I don't but think I anybody wonder, should have been playing sports over the past year. Mm -hmm. But I wonder, Frederick, Good. do these kids even realize yes. that they have it? Because, you know, especially gymnasts, they start at such a young age, they discovered, and their career young pretty age. much ends yeah. by the time they're late 20s. Do they even know that they have twisted? Because yeah. all their focus is on this. And like Simone no. Miles saying, you know, I feel like there's mm -hmm. something outside of this. And I think this has to do with, you know, media's attention. She has a little bit more freedom now that she has accomplished that the highest level that they're probably a little bit more leaning on her and she's able to get out to see that, oh, that exists. Oh, that exists. Oh, I can do that too. And I feel like maybe that's how mm -hmm. she's seeing yeah. what other things that she may be interested in. But prior to that, everything was gymnastics. You know, when she's eating, they're telling her what kind of diet to have. When she's moving, hey, you're not moving right when you're, you know, working out, no, you have to do this, you have to do that. Like everything that they do, why are you not sleeping? You should be sleeping right now. Everything was focused on gymnastics, gymnastics, gymnastics. She didn't, I didn't think these kids were introduced to anything outside that phone that every teenager is stuck to. They probably did not have that in their world for a very long time, or it was no. much later. So for these people to oh, know that I mean, other, else, yeah. So can I let me play devil's advocate exactly. just a little bit here? And I gotta play devil's advocate just a little bit because yes. um and and not that she or any athlete owes anybody anything. Like you know what I'm saying? Anybody can tap out anytime they yeah. want to. It's just it's their choice in life. But to play devil's advocate, to be number one in the world, if your goal is to be number one in the world, there is a mental toughness that has to come with being number one in the world. You have to shut everything off. You have to get up four o'clock in the morning before your competition does. You have sure. to, you know what I'm saying? Like there's this a level of mental toughness that you have to have. Can that mental toughness break? Of course, we're human beings. But to be number one in the world, that that that's a brain that, you know what I'm saying? You, you have to have a special brain to be able to be the best of a billion people on this planet that could be doing something, you are the number one at it. Right. So, but what I, but she's, but she, exactly, you know, she, well, you know, not she's forced, proven you're, herself you're time and time yeah, again. Oh yeah, yeah, 100%. She's, she was, for, yeah, she's, she, she's been forced and now she's waking up to the fact that it's her choice and she's, you know, she's exercising her option. People make you feel obligated to things sometimes, and you don't know. And especially when you're talking about athletes of color, they make them feel like this is the only thing you can do to ever be accepted. Because mm. you have to remember, like, all of her positive reinforcement as a black kid came from doing gymnastics, not from being good at biology class or being a nice person, wearing nice clothes, or, you know, being a decent human being. It was like, oh, you're such a great gymnast, just like, oh, you're such a great football player or basketball player or whatever. And they do this to these kids all the time, these kids of color. These other white kids, they have options in life. They have other things they can do. And they can be average athletes, and they're still promoted as great athletes. And that's the difference. And that's one of the things mm -hmm. that's really troubling. These athletes of color, these, these girls are superstars. And just like the girl that just won the all-around, I mean, I'm like, oh, my God, here's another one. You know, and now this one's, you know, Asian American. And I'm like, how are we going to unpack that? Where is this going? Word. It's the same thing. We're just push, 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 push. And then the minute they don't want to do it anymore, oh, you're a bad person. 
you know, what if LeBron James said, you know, I'm tired of basketball, I'm going to retire, I'm going to spend time with my family, and I don't want to do this anymore. Everybody would be mad. Mm-hmm. They get mad. And I'm like, you can't get mad at him for that. But they do. They got mad at him because he went to Miami. They got mad at him because he left Cleveland. They get mad at you if you don't do what they want because they think you're supposed to pull that cart the way all of these immigrants have been doing for hundreds of years in America. That's the role you play. They do it to you when you're working for those people in the system. They do it to me when I'm working for these people in the system as well. There is a different expectation of people of color than for the status quo. And this is another yeah. example of it. And she's got the power to exercise it. I, I admire her. I salute her. I, I do also because I, it, wouldn't it be so much better if you could just be a gymnast instead of you have to be the black gymnast? And what is it like exactly. to be the black gymnast? Exactly. Black, 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 black. Like, why do I need to answer and, these questions? Hey, I do. I'm just, I'm, I, yeah. But you will. For the tennis will. players? You can't get away from it. If you and I, yeah. Like if, if the three of us like made some big, important thing in the entertainment business, it would be like African American and Korean American producers did this. That's <laughs> yeah. how they're going to say it. Uh, that's how they're going to say it. They're not going to get any other way but that. You know, it's exhausting. But that's what they're going to say. They're never going to see us as just people. They can't. Because then that means that indicts them to all of this systemic abuse they've been perp- perpetrating against us for 500 years. Mm. It's crazy, you know? It's absolutely crazy. You know, they have gone around the world and colonized and screwed up so many different countries and cut them in half. And there's a North and there's a South and all this other shit. You know, families have seen each other for 70 years because of these colonialists and their ability to be able to tap the resources out of different areas of the world for their own gain. And that includes human beings. We are a natural resource. We're as precious as the oil and the minerals in the ground. And that's what Simone Biles is. She's a beautiful piece of a diamond. And they want that. And she's like, I don't want to be that anymore. That and that's dope. So and that's dope. Yes. I will not be that for you. Um it's ten o'clock. Exactly. Do you still have more time? And for you're it? not the way you act all the time. You um, we should wrap it up. I have a speaking engagement to be a part of at a place called the Creative Circus here in Atlanta, which is a um, trading ground for the future ad execs of the world. So I'm going to be talking about some of the things we just were talking about, you know, the uh, proliferation of culture from all over the world that is influencing us moving forward, whether we're talking about Africa and Asia which I think are the two biggest key influencers in the world right now. Yes, um, it is. And, and so, you know, I am asked to come in and unpack this stuff. Interesting thing, though, um, you know, I'm going to get to the point now where I'm going to have to start charging people to speak because everybody's Turn asking up. me to tell them things and I don't get, I don't get paid for it. I don't get paid put that them. Emmy on the you know, table. As soon it, as you walk in the room, right, put the exactly, Emmy down. Exactly. Like, this is what you're paying for. You are paying exactly. for it. Emmy Award yeah. winning Frederick yeah. Taylor, TomorrowPictures.tv. Hey, Frederick, exactly. you're definitely one of the minds that I exactly. want to be able to sit down and pick. I'm just afraid I'm not going to understand all the information <laughs> that will be coming <laughs> in my direction. But I truly feel uh, you're I, one of those people that would be you know, one of those advocates, the innovators that would be mentioned in the future for sure. You are definitely- Absolutely, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna do this. I'm gonna come live in the studio as well. Um, trying to get back out to California as, as soon as um, this very thing dies down. Believe me, if I can understand Freddie, you can understand Freddie. Turn up, he knows how Always to put it in the lane. Always appreciate Turn up. Um, yes, this is this is thrilling. I enjoy this at, at all times, and I'm happy to come back again at any time uh, as well and share more. Awesome. Well, you have an amazing uh, uh, time at your at your session today, and don't forget yes, to introduce yourself charge. as Emmy Award winning Freddie. You're in front of me. Yeah, exactly. The going rate is between five thousand to twenty five thousand dollars. They can afford it. They can so. afford it. They sure can. Or, they can afford it. I think so. Three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars an hour is consulting. I mean, like these mm-hmm. people pay it all the time. I don't. You know, I want to share. They do. I want to share. Exactly. This is an African proverb that I just learned. 
two days ago, each one teach one. And I actually mentioned it on Wednesday at the group mm -hmm. meeting. But I feel like each one teach many seems to be making better sense. Yeah, your goal is to teach one, but I feel like we're producing way more than dropping off like in this lifetime with overpopulations and things like that. So I think for each one to teach many, you'll be doing great things. Did that make sense? I agree. Thank you. No, it does. It, it totally um, it, it, it totally makes sense. I will share what I will share an African proverb with you as well. You, you can you can plant the seeds, you can grow the tree, you can you can water the plant, the tree can bear fruit. You can give the fruit to others, but you cannot control how it tastes to them. That's on them. And I would like to give a uh, African proverb tell, to tell you guys. Tell the that. Uh, the African, oh, no. pro the African <laughs> proverb I know is. I had to be ignorant for a second. Thank you, Freddie. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Frederick thank Taylor, you, thank for you. joining us. We greatly appreciate you. Thank you, Miss Everything KK. I look forward to seeing both of you again real soon. Yes, sir. Okay, have a great show. See you guys. All right. Thank you, Peace. sir. Uh, I want to give I want to give props to uh, to a, a rapper out here doing some incredible things because he is complaining that uh, no one is giving him his props uh, and his uh, his name is N L E Chopper. Now, when I see a name like N L E Chopper, I automatically run. You know what I'm saying? Because that just is, is I'm a little bit too old for choppers. You know what I'm saying? But uh, for him, it, it might just be a name because he is a, uh, a a vegan rapper out here making herbs. And he has created a new herb. One helps uh, reverse erectile dysfunction, and the other helps reverse uh, obesity. And uh, he was just a little upset that a lot of the uh, rappers and influencers aren't even doing anything as simple as you know retweeting him or helping his spread his message. But I, I think it's amazing. I went to his website, uh, NLEHealthAndWellness.com, and he has all kinds of herbs and supplements and stuff. And I was thoroughly surprised. I was like, this is incredible because usually when you see somebody all, you know, what I'm saying shirt off, tatted up, you know, what I'm saying you you think the opposite, especially as a young rapper. But I'm proud of him. I think this is incredible. So if uh, anybody else wants more information on uh, on NLE, NLE Choppa, go to his website, NLEHealthAndWellness.com and check out his different herbs and um uh, and medicines and he's also in the process of uh, working on herbs that will uh, allegedly cure stds and he also claimed that he helped cure somebody of cancer so uh shout out to nle chapa keep doing your thing young man so these are these are herbs these are marijuana these are the different no. like oh, it's, it's different like are... it's like herbs like you they grow from the ground herbs not you don't smoke it i, I don't okay I don't know. so because when you say herbs you know automatically and it and connect associated with rapper i apologize for assuming but i just automatically went to the greens like maybe no think herb like mention... herbal supplements well that's an herbal supplement too but oh, man. I... Yeah. <laughs> but i guess no, but his... i mean just by looking at this i don't i don't know if i would be the one to be retweeting it either what i what exactly is he retweeting had and are is he posting pictures of before and after to say okay this is what is derived from here i hope so what are, yeah like what are the I mean, a lot of people, when you have the exercise, you have the supplements that you must exercise three times a day for at least 20 minutes. And, you know, you have other additives that goes along and that looks like it looks like we it does. Uh, and, you know, there's so many things that go along with it that maybe they have their own, own herbs that they don't want to you know, be tweeting somebody else's like, how, uh -huh. are you, how new is this guy? How? How much do you know of this NLE Chopper? Well, I don't. I don't particularly listen to his music, so I don't know much uh, about him. But in in the younger hip hop thing, I think he's one of the the young artists out here making noise. I think he just needs a little more time. He, I don't think he should be butter. He should just be continuing to push his product. Word. He truly believes in it, rather than 
you know, blaming everybody else because they really don't need to do have anything to do with is what he's doing. True Only that. thing you can do is that build and later on say, I told you. Yeah. You didn't want to be a part of it. So no, you need to purchase instead of me having to say thank you and give you a sample or provide you with any 100%. amount you could possibly have. So, because yeah, one, I mean, one thing we know, don't nobody owe you, nobody owe anybody anything. So it it, it it would almost even sound like he'd be whining, like, I don't understand why nobody's helping me. You know what I'm saying? It's like, they don't need to help you. Just put your head down, do your work, keep curing people. If you're if you're really helping people, the word will spread. Because that's how I found out about Dr. Sabi. I, oh, I found yes. out about Dr. Sabi through word of mouth and just hearing from different people about people who do stuff. You know what I'm saying? I never heard Dr. Sabi say, I can't believe you. nobody's helping promote what I do. He just does the work. Well, he just did the work. Yeah, because NLH so for, uh, in this case... It is the job of the people that is helped. Now, I'd be upset over those people that are not sharing and saying, Word. oh, yeah, he helped me and this is my result. Yeah, I don't have to breathe heavy anymore because I lost so much weight. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have to take, you know, daily shots anymore because my blood level is whatever, whatever. It is his proven that will get him to where he wants to be. Don't ask for somebody that has nothing to do with nothing, just learning about it. Like you should be sharing it because we're fellow rappers and Word. you know. I think that's a little that. premature for on his part. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I'm not a person who's into utilizing these things to, you know, help your health situation out. So I wouldn't be an advocate either. You, Even you if I saw that, not. If I can do it myself, no, I truly believe in doing a lot of, not that I wouldn't take herbs because I do, but I'm saying not for a particular reason to help. We drink tea because we want to drink tea, not because there's no reason other than I just want to have tea. Oh, um, I, I don't mind having things that have a reason behind it. Sometimes it's, it's even more motivation to do it if I know, like, oh, this is good for your kidneys. Like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll drink that or eat that because it's good for your kidneys. I wish I was more <laughs> disciplined with doing that. And I'm the person that'd be like, water's good for your kidneys. <laughs> you know. Do that. So. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's get into some of these. Uh, I, I think what's happening in Hong Kong is uh, is getting pretty scary. Uh, so Hong Kong pro-democracy protester was found guilty of terrorism uh, in the first trial under China security law. So, you know, they passed this law. I think it was a couple years ago. And do you remember when they had all the protests in Hong Kong? I do not recall. Uh, so it, it, for, no. in Hong Kong, uh, they, they had like major protests. I was about uh, two years ago, almost now. And it was because of a new law that um, that China had passed in China taking back over Hong Kong. So Hong Kong was basically like a freer, a freer place. And in right. uh, China is not. Uh, so in, in what many see as a worrying precedent, a pro-democracy protester from Hong Kong has been found guilty of terrorism and inciting succession under China's tough new security law. Uh, this kid, 24 years old, uh, Tong Ying Kit was arrested in July of 2020 after a new security law, which sparked months of protests in Hong Kong, went into effect. So basically they say if you if you did something, uh, if you did something before, you can go to Hong Kong and you'd be fine. But under this new law, you can be extradited from Hong Kong and sent to mainland China and you have to suffer the consequences there. So it made it seem like Hong Kong wasn't as free as they thought they were. So being that this guy was found, uh, uh, was found guilty, he's gonna be in prison for life. A 24-year-old kid is going to be 24-year-old kid. Over and uh he was denied both a jury trial and bail. So he no he sorry, he faces life in prison. And more than 60 other people are um are facing the same kind of charges that he was facing. So they're really really going hard and being strict um in in Hong Kong. And that's scary for a place that thought that they were going to be free. So I bet they wish the UK come back and take them back over again. Cause yikes. I mean, him having to uh, hit a police officer with his motorcycle doesn't 
Oh, yeah, that'll help it's it all. Not, it's not just a protest. It's, there's a little more to it. And I'm sure those pro- Moors have gave the government reasons to charge with extras. Mm-hmm. Because protesting alone, I don't think you can do much about. But mm-hmm. because things that have followed happen, that, that gives them the reason. Because this police officer, I mean, they're automatically put at a higher level. It's, it's different than hitting a civilian accidentally. Word. I mean, this happened during a reason. So maybe he was fleeing too, fleeing the justice. We don't know all about it, but yeah. Do we see the leader of this protest also? Is that is, you know, if you're like the Malcolm X, Martin Luther King of the situation, you're punished. You're set as an mm-hmm. example too. Word. So wow. But 24 is such a young age for you to be uh, facing something so great when people are getting away with murders left and right over here. Yeah. Very, very, uh, very unfair. So we'll see how that works out. Um, did you see, did you see the video of the Atlanta cop kicking a woman in the head? I didn't get to see any videos. I have such a busy schedule these days. I am really happy. <laughs> oh, that's good. Well, but, I just get you so busy. That's terrible. That's a, oh, our kids have really, really busy schedules. You know that nine a.m. to nine p.m. is no joke. Word. But, but whatever you're saying, a car kicking a woman in the head, it has already been done. What the heck is wrong with these people? Don't they? Don't these people get punished? Well, he is. So a, a sergeant in the Atlanta Police Department was suspended with pay Monday after video showed him kicking a handcuffed woman in the head. Uh, police were called to an apartment complex for a domestic dispute um, and it showed the woman. She was uh, this is where the video starts. She was laying down uh, on the ground, handcuffed, you know, say hands behind her back, laying on the ground. She lifts her head up. I don't know what she says to the guy. He just kicks her right in the face. And it's like, bro, it was so unnecessary. No matter, I, I can't imagine anything she said to him. You know what I'm saying? It was all verbal. That would warrant her, warrant him to kick her in the. And this was a big dude. You know what I'm saying? And it, it's ridiculous. And 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 I hope a little bit more than uh, suspension. Uh, it, um, DJ MDB said he said that she spit on. Even if she spit on him, just wipe his shoe off. See, now this is a case, like you said, you had mentioned for quite a while. They need to spend a lot of money in psychological area for the police reform. I mean, when it comes to reform, reforming these police, it's the mental issues that has to be taken care of. Because they are bringing home all their, it seems like with their authority, with that badge, they're bringing all their pain from their childhood, their currenthood, their future life outside into these kind of situations where clearly it's wrong and yeah her her family says she has mental issues i'm sure he has mental issues i mean no I she, she, she the, the girl that was being arrested had oh, has mental woman. health issues now i remember when we had uh, ed on the show ed talked about how when the police come the police are coming there to arrest people and uh and i'm saying when they say defund the police they need to put into the budget crisis uh, intervention people to go to these situations to be able to work with somebody who has mental health issues because if somebody's already gone you know what i'm saying they're not going to just cooperate with uh, a regular police officer it's just going to be brute force meant met with mental health issues and it's just going to be a bad situation so you need to have somebody trained that knows how to communicate with somebody who's a little off uh to make the situation run more smooth because you're just not going to show up like who did what put about bop, bop, to somebody who's struggling already. It's just, it's just throwing fuel on the fire. Yeah, while Very this dangerous. person is struggling, we are sending someone else with the mental issue of authority to this household to not better the situation, but clearly yeah. have worse in the situation. So when it comes to that, seriously, please need to be, I don't know. I know it's a lot of money, a lot of education, a lot of things that needs to go into it, but to hear this so often, it's just, doesn't somebody just want to do something about it? Like, doesn't the yeah. mental health board be like, hey, we will offer you services. Like, we'll give you like 80 hours a week for your like highest, you know, issued officer so that we can help you to better your system. Somebody needs to work together to get this better because this is just way too often. It's so disheartening to be hearing a police officer in these 
like they say, you know, Freddie said about black men, it's hard to be a decent black male in this world. It's like, it's hard to, I think it would be that for the police officers too nowadays, because there's so many of these bad ones that make the good ones not be able to walk comfortably, probably. Mm-hmm. You know, have to look behind, look to their shoulders, you know, left and right, because they're wearing the uniform next to somebody they probably clearly clearly know is wrong. Word. <laughs> For a lot of this, a lot of this needs the, the reset button hit on it, uh, because unfortunately, we all know that being a police officer is a very, very tough, difficult job is is not for everybody because people are insane. The, uh, the human beings are just wild animals, you know, what I'm saying that can talk and walk up straight and sometimes drive cars and stuff like that. Uh, but it's a very difficult job to have to do. So, you know, my, my heart goes out to police officers who really want to do a good job in this crazy world. Uh, but where we all fall short is that, you know, what I'm saying it's humans dealing with humans and is is I, I don't I, I don't I don't know what's gonna make it get better because it has to start from the beginning of you know what I'm saying the more decent people we have coming up, the more it would make sense for police officers and, and anybody who has to deal with police officers. But as long as we're starting from you know turmoil as people grow up and get older, it's never gonna be good. It's never gonna get good. You know, I was thinking about at the I mean beginning of the policing way, 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 way back in the day. Weren't the police white to be policing like the blacks and the other criminals? It was, they they were created to protect people's property. So, okay. yeah. But but they were white. They were overseers, right? yeah. So, I mean, it, and while they were protecting their property, who are they protecting their properties from? Yeah. The ones without the property. So, I guess... That mentality has is still around, yeah. I feel, and that's where it has to change. So you really have to go to the beginning where everybody has to be equal, where everybody has to be treated, you know, correct, equally. And that's not, I don't think that's ever going to happen. I don't it, think it, ever going to happen. I, I don't think it's going to happen either because we live in a very it's greedy a society. Statement. Because uh, what, what needs to be done is as much as... Um, we need to combat poverty because most people that have aren't doing things that hurt other people because they have. It, usually most of the time, I would say it's people in desperate situations that are committing most of the crimes. So if we do as much as we could to combat poverty, uh, I, that would change a lot of things. But as long as we have the mentality of uh, I, I want it all and as long as I have it all, I don't care if you get none or not then yeah things won't change well if it doesn't bother you yeah i mean i i'm sort of but it in a should way, I'm kind it, of- it should bother somebody that somebody else uh, can't eat that should bother another human being that another human being won't doesn't have the ability to eat because if they don't have the ability to eat and or feed their family they're coming after you and yours so that they can feed their family so the you mind know frame you know what's bad, bad about that People are aware that they, you know, their neighbors cannot eat. I think a lot of the times, not all of the time, but a lot of the times people are aware that, you know, some people are struggling, some people are not. What do we do about it? Not necessarily we. What do we do about it, though? We avoid those streets. We go around it so we don't have to see it to feel bad about it because we know that we're going to feel bad about it. So we strengthen ourselves in the wrongest of ways by ignoring, avoiding, like purposely not taking that route where you know that thing is happening. I, that's how I see the society nowadays mm-hmm. for the most part, which, yeah. like I said, they are willing to take that longer route just so that they don't have to deal with it. In those cases, they don't mind taking those longer routes. Whereas, you know, when you're at a restaurant, your food is like two, you know, two minutes, you know, delayed, like what's going on? Those are the same people. So how do we fix that? It, you have to raise them to have a, to care, you and you would think them. with all these religions, you know, what I'm saying that people would would have a heart to be that way. But I don't really think a lot of religion is working either, because here we are still with people with poverty, and then people ignoring the people that's living. And in religion is causing the greatest of wars. In the name of religion, the name of God, people are killing. 
But I was, I came across this, I mean, we're going through the Olympics. I know you had talked about the Olympics um, before I came in, but I wanted to mention this article on another Simone, Simone Manuel, the first black female to have won the gold medal in 100. And she also, I believe, leads the way in the 50s. But for this Olympics, she did not make the finals for the 100 by, I think it was a 0.2 seconds or 0.02 seconds. She missed uh, final uh, qualifications. Now, in one of the articles that I read was, it was subject, the unfair burden placed on Simone Manuel. Now, this is in a similar line as to, I feel, probably Simone Biles, what she has to deal with being the greatest of black female athlete in gym gymnastics. Simone Manuel, the up and coming, you know, first black female to be the gold medal, you know, contending in that highest level. I'm sure Os Naomi Osaka probably goes through that kind of pressure. The thing is, this is an article that I guess this journalist must have felt like, wow, we are being unfair to these athletes. She was mentioning how there are six athletes from the swim team that was pulled for, you know, do the interviews with the media and things like that. And of those people, the names that I have, oh, I screenshot it, my bad. The names that are Ryan Murphy, Caleb Dressel, Ryan Lochte, Lily King, and Ledecky, Ledecky and Manuel. You know, great drivers, big drivers. All these people were interviewed and only Simone Biles has to deal with racism. Like, mm. you know, the black, like, what are you doing? How are we building? And she herself over a year ago had mentioned like, you know, this, you know, I love talking about this. I love being an advocate for black people. I love being an advocate for athletes, inclusion and all that stuff. But like, why am I the only one that's being asked? Why am I the only advocate? Why are my peers like these, you know, he shouldn't mention names, but she's just saying like, why am I, why are you guys not jumping to help to make this better? You guys are only asking me this when really you should be asking them this too. Like, how do you, you know, make it more diverse? How do you build this, you know, sport up so that more can contribute and more people can be included? And I do feel it's very, very unfair, you know, at the beginning when the mental health was affecting these black athletes, I felt like, oh my God, like what's going on there? they're all having issues and they're all going through this, but I could really, if I was the only female in that area and every last thing was, you're Asian, you're Asian. What are you gonna do about it? You're Asian, what are you doing for mm -hmm. your people? You're Asian and how are you dealing with the people that are not Asian? You're Asian and it's like, what doors have, so much of that pressure, it is not fair. And like you say, these are young, young, young human beings who have been focused in this area. They're not about all this pressure that just all of a sudden with that one, with that goal, with number one standings to be dealing with. And I think it is so unfair that these journalists really do need to correct themselves. And they should have a list of questions that are similar to everybody. Mm -hmm. Just true. And, you know, I need to correct my way of thinking too, because at first I'm like, you're being weak, but then I'm yeah just thinking more and more study like reading more and more into it we can't even barely handle or you know personal issues and here they are having to deal with world issues that you know that they're not even prepared for the pressure yeah. i could i can see or why simone has taken a step back knowing that if she went on it that gold is you know nothing for her not nothing but like you know clearly graspable. Any medal is an honor, but she knows that that gold is something that is hers when she goes into it. For her to give that up, it's got to be that huge at the world level. And I think she is really saying something with her decision in a, in a great way. A lot of people might say, you know, whatever, but I think in a great way, she's really speaking up for the athletes of color. Very commendable.
in my opinion. What do you think? I think that if I went to the Olympics to swim, I just want to talk about swimming. Mm -hmm. I think if I went to the Olympics to play tennis, I just want to talk about tennis. I don't want to talk about world problems. I don't want to talk about the strife of people. I don't want to talk about, I, we are at the Olympics to run, to swim, to jump, to kayak, to shoot, to do all these things. I want to talk about the event that I did. I don't want to talk about everything else. Not at the Olympics, right. not. Absolutely. Cause you know, even after you even have to play basketball after like the NBA after a basketball game. I don't want to talk about a police shooting after a basketball game. I want to talk about the basketball game. Now, if, if I want to come go on a different platform and talk about these things, uh, that's that's what we're there for. Turn up, let's go, but not at what we're at now. I mean, absolutely. Like you know, we we've been watching different things. They were talking about. Oh, that's what they're talking about. You know, somebody's wedding plans in the near future. You know, for. Oh, one the volleyball athlete, game yesterday. Yeah, yeah, volleyball. And yeah, another one, you know, first, uh, another one was uh, first, I think she's the first volleyball athlete to have given birth to a child to be able to come back. Now, those stories, yeah, that's a blip thing to say, hey, to say, athletes, you don't have to quit just because you have a family and you can still continue. I think those things are great stories to have, and that is directly connected to her. And that's something that she can answer, you know for herself as her experience, but for these people to say, well, what do you think uh, would be, you know, if this happened, I don't think that's fair because it's mm -hmm. not something that you yourself would know. And you're just asking me to speculate. Now, speaking of swimming, I'm glad you, you brought up swimming. I saw this story this morning. I want to know what you think. Is someone being a sore loser or were the, would it might be weight behind what they're saying? Okay, so uh, after U.S. swimmer Ryan Murphy took the silver uh, in the Olympics 200-meter backstroke final on Friday, finishing behind Russian uh, Evgeny uh, Rylov, he voiced concerns that the race was marred by doping. Uh, Ryan said, it's a huge mental drain on me that I'm swimming in a race that's probably not clean, uh, Murphy told reporters. Uh, then even Rylov was asked about it, and Rylov was like, look, from the bottom of my heart, I am clean for sport. I've devoted my entire life to this sport. Uh, Ryan didn't accuse me of anything, so I'm not going to make a comment about it. But does that make Ryan Murphy sound like a sore loser, that he's saying, like, look, man, I worked really hard, and since I worked really hard, I should have won. But since I didn't win, people are taking drugs, and it's not fair. Now, yes, I would say yeah. if, he, if he is making that as a statement – he better know for a fact that somebody's doping. If he doesn't know for a fact that somebody's doping, I think he's being a sore loser. I think he's being a sore loser because, I mean, I don't know much about this, but from what I have heard on interviews from former Olympic athletes at the highest level, they have said that they are the ones who get tested the most. Because mm -hmm. right after they race, they are pretty much taken by a um, person to go and take care of their business. Right in their presence. They don't even get to close the door. It's pretty much stripped down, mm -hmm. do it right there, and that is transferred over and tested out. So I'm sure he has experienced this for himself. And maybe, and maybe because he has experienced it, he's saying like some people don't get it. But I truly feel he <laughs> is hurt that he didn't get the first place and mm -hmm. that I don't think the statement is very mature to be had, especially when you don't have proof, knowing what the process that these people have to go through. I mean, people get found out years later for some of the things. Mm -hmm. So it's very premature on his part. I think he needs to apologize to the organization. It's yeah, you can be hurt, but you don't have to make statements like that. That's other athletes are gonna look at you like, who are you talking about? Like, what do you know? Like, if you mm -hmm. know something, why don't you just go report it? You know? Word. Don't be MJB says, says, say it before the race, not after. Turn up. Absolutely. What up, DJ Jazzy Louis? Said, tell him there are no trophies for losers and man up. Hey, turn up. You got I, the silver. I, yeah, that's that's very bad sportsmanship. I think so too. I think so too. Um, yeah, this, this was kind of strange to me. I also came across a story about a, a baby being born with her twist embryo inside her stomach. 
it was crazy. Uh, according to live science, the rare phenomenon is known as fetus in fetu. Uh, it occurs. It occurs in about one in five hundred thousand births. Fetus in fetu is when the baby's twin starts to develop inside the baby's abdomen. Uh, doctors in Israel noticed this happening to a child during a late pregnancy ultrasound on the baby's mother and saw the baby's stomach was enlarged. Uh, once the baby was born, tests were done to confirm that this was indeed a case of fetus in fetu. The x-ray showed that the second baby was a partially developed embryo with some bones. It's unclear how it happens, but scientists believe the second baby is a form of a parasitic twin where a fetus is absorbed by another during identical twin pregnancy. Uh, fortunately for the parents, the, uh, the doctors were successfully uh, able to remove the embryo and, the, and the, the newborn is expected to make a full recovery. But I think that that is incredible and weird. Weird. And I'm, I'm surprised that it's so common. I know it's said one in 500,000, but that still seems- Common enough to make common. a name for it. Right. Fetus and fetal turn up that's crazy the human body is amazing when it works good and when it doesn't turn human up body's amazing please people stop messing with your bodies stop messing with your bodies because you know those are rising too the deformed births the you know the children with deep is it defects is that a word i can use mm -hmm. Children who are born with defects, that has to do with how a person treats women, how women treat their bodies. And I think, I mean, you weren't born genetically deformed, so you can't blame it on the genes. All that came before you weren't, you know, defected or were born with disabilities. So I think modern days, people are utilizing things that are not natural in their bodies. They don't take care of themselves. I mean, Women are going out and they're pretty practically nothing in 30 degrees because they want to look cute. That is not good for your body. A woman's body, I truly feel, is a temple. You need to take care of it. Like, we don't allow our kids to sit on cold pavements, cold chairs and things like that. Because I truly feel that in the long run, you know, will take care of their next generations too. It, that's why I don't believe in chemicals, having to use these supplements to make yourselves better. Like you yourself can do it. I know some, some people out there, they have their issues and I know some people do require that additional assistance, but it is so easy just having to volunteer. So many people resort to, can I have some, you know, ibuprofen? Can I have, you know, painkiller? Like, no, dude, drink some orange juice. You know, have a tangerine. Those things are drink water, hydrate yourself. If you have a headache, there's a reason. Like take care of it other ways, but the parents are teaching their kids to go to drugs directly rather than like, how did this problem come about? They don't talk to their kids. They want the easy solution. And those easy solutions are causing more disabled. In the future, these kind of defects are happening. That's probably a twin that was about to happen and mm -hmm. something happened within the first three months of that woman's pregnancy that didn't allow the split to happen properly and science yes is part of it but i truly feel humans are really helping themselves out for these natural disasters to themselves uh let's do some of these uh crazy <laughs> stories uh one of the first wash your ass and brush your teeth uh this comes up out of louisiana a louisiana millionaire pleads guilty in absurd wife kidnap plot this is bananas so a louisiana millionaire has admitted to plotting his estranged wife's kidnapping a bizarre plan that went desperately off trails when two men he hired to abduct her ended up drowning during a foot chase when the police uh According to the Lafayette Daily Advisor, uh, Lawrence Michael Hanley, uh, who found early success in the tech and vitamin supplement sectors and founded a chain of treatment centers, uh, he sold it for more than $21 million. He pleaded guilty to two counts of second degree kidnapping and one count of attempted second degree kidnapping. He faces up to 35 years in prison. So uh, Hanley, 53, and his wife Shonda initiated divorce proceedings in 2017. Uh, Hanley claimed Shonda was abusive 
and had at one point hired a hitman to kill him. So Shonda countered that Hanley uh, spied on her emails, phone calls, and computer files. This sounds like War of the Roses. Like, they was getting a divorce <laughs> and bat was battling each other. So she hired a hitman to kill him. He hired some guys to kidnap her. So they, they did end up kidnapping her. They, uh, you know, grabbed her, put a thing over her head, threw her in the back of a van. Um, but then they were doing like it, they, they, they weren't driving so well. So the police recognized they weren't driving well and ended up, you know, chasing them for that. So they get to a um, like a swampy area where they hop out and they try to run from the police. And that's when they drowned. Uh, talk about karma. That's instant karma, like immediately. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to understand how Hanley uh, was busted. Uh, for this when the guys that he hired died but she probably told them yeah i'm pretty sure they kidnapped her and told her who they were and then she told him but man that sounds like an ugly divorce if she's trying to get him sniped he's trying to get her kidnapped i think that money has a lot to do with uh uh while they going at each other's head like that <laughs> but lawrence michael hanley you need to wash your ass what her too Oh yeah, her too, definitely. Dude, they they're both awful. She just I thought she was the one drowned with the two. I was like, I was gonna say no, Michael won, but I guess they're both they should both go to jail, really, because if they, they were really to should. research this information and go through their text communication, if all this is found out, they're both going. They both Yeah, I wonder if he jail. has uh evidence of her trying to get a hitman to kill him. There's gonna be nothing without evidence, but if he can find evidence, they're both crazy. I know, I know nobody get the money. They doing all that. Okay, so he's on the claiming side where she clearly was caught in the situation. She got oh. kidnapped and got her ass beat. It's ridiculous. Um, another <sighs> wash ass and brush your teeth. And this one is making me lose hope for the human race altogether. It's like, come on, man. Well, all these are. This one happened in Omaha. Um, I, I don't I don't know if DJ Hands. They didn't say in the story if they had kids or not. I'm not sure. I hope not. But my guess is that they don't because they didn't they didn't mention them in the story. Uh, but the next one is in Omaha, Nebraska. In Omaha, Nebraska, there was a man that was so unhappy to see another man wearing a mask uh, at an Aldi that he allegedly shot him in the neck with a BB gun. So basically what happened is you got these two people at an Aldi store. One is like a pro, you don't have to wear a mask, don't conform. And the other one was, I want to wear a mask. The dude that didn't have a mask on was so enraged by seeing somebody with a mask on that they ended up getting into a fight. And in that fight, he ended up pulling out a BB gun and shot the dude in the neck. When basically they asked him, like when the dude that got attacked asked him, like, man, what are you doing? What are you attacking me for? And the guy was like, you're on the other team. There's no teams. I don't understand how you would be so mad to see somebody wearing a mask. Like it, it, it shouldn't do anything to you. You know what I'm saying? Like at all. Just mind your business. If they want to wear a mask, let them wear a mask. But to get angry at somebody because you see them wearing a mask. Come on, people. It's getting ridiculous. Wash your ass. Mind your business. Because you're on the other team? Because you're on the other team. Because you are a masker. Because you are somebody who wants to wear a mask. You're, you're on the opposite team of me who I think masks are dumb. You know what I'm saying? First thing, first thing I thought was when you say because you're on the other team. And some, because, you know, people wear masks that says Dodgers. No, 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 no. It's, you're, on the, you're, on the, you're on the team of people who wear masks. And he is a non-vaxxer, non, uh, non-masker. COVID is not real. Yeah, he was arrested, DJ Hands. The guy was arrested. But, you know, but like as I have shared with you, you know, this person who clearly did not believe in the vaccines while he was dying, I, I read from this is an acquaintance's Instagram page where they knew this person and they were completely against it. And they ended up getting the vaccine in their deathbed, they still insisted that this vaccine was, you know, not to be had. So mm. when people are willing to die, knowing that this drug can possibly save you, 
I mean, mm-hmm. they really, really do believe whatever, I guess, the government is out to get them or something. Because if you're in your death by suffering and you're in your ventilator still okay. saying, I'm not going to get it and nobody <laughs> else should get it. I think, yeah, that's kind of, I guess that's how truly in those people are. Stupid, I guess. There, I there was know. another story out of, uh, out of Las Vegas, and it actually has the adverse effect. Like, it was a guy who was totally against getting vaccinated, but... He ended up having to send his wife a text saying, I wish I would have just took that damn vax because he died. So uh, after he died, the mom wouldn't end up getting uh, vaccinated and their, and their oldest daughter uh, went and got vaccinated, too, after after he made the statement. Because, like, he fought it the whole time. And then as soon as he found out he had COVID, all he said was, damn it, I wish I would have just took the vaccine. And those were basically his last words. Thank goodness he said that because now, you know, hopefully his family that's left behind won't have to go through that. I mean, I don't know if it's proven or if it's not proven, but I mean, it's, if it's not going to hurt anybody and if it's just, why not? Like, you yourself it, it, make that decision for yourself. Why are you stating it for the world to, when you don't know yeah. what the ultimate result is? You yourself, yeah. I get it. But let's not make decisions for other people because there's some parents that are straight out say like no nah, i'm not going to give it to my kids because i have issues of you know this and that i get it you have medical issues but your children are perfectly healthy and they're not able right. to participate like why are you holding on to them like they want to participate let them participate i, I just think it's but, funny when the people who are against the, the vaccine but they put everything else in their body that's not good for them, but they're worried about the vaccine. They Absolutely. consciously put all these other things into their body, but yet they worried about the vaccine. That is, it's just funny to me, but yeah. I mean, just talking to my cousin who's in that world, I mean, I just feel bad when he can have a vacation. He hasn't had, you know, year and a half off yet. And he's, he's a pretty accomplished, you know, physician for him to be constantly on. I, I mean, even I just, by feeling bad for him, I just want to do my part and mm-hmm. not be in his, you know, hospital bed. Word. Heck yeah. So, um, the man in Omaha, wash your ass. Uh, another wash your ass and brush your teeth. Turn up. Uh, this one, I got to do a woosa. I got to do a woosa. Anytime it has something to do with children, I got to do a big, gigantic woosa because they are never. They never ask to be born into these situations. And if you know that you are a shitty person already, just don't have kids. And if that means that you can't have sex, then don't have sex. Because having sex really heightens your your chances of having a child. This one's in Florida, which should be to no surprise. Afraid the people in Florida. Turn up. Melissa Ann Doss gets to wash your ass and brush your teeth today. Uh, she was charged with three ca- counts of neglect and one count of child abuse following police reports to her home on July 24th after a neighbor reported seeing a child inside their screened-in patio. Um, uh, They were called called to go investigate, but when the cops got there, the lady refused to let them in. So uh, the next day, the neighbor called again. It's like, yo, something's not right over there. You need to go check it out. So on the, the, uh, the second day, the cops went over there. I guess they still couldn't get in. The woman wouldn't let her in. But the woman's letting them know, hey, I'm at my wit's end. You better leave me alone. So the third time, the cops finally get to go inside. And they go in and they smell feces. And, and it smells like urine. There's trash. There's insects. It's like a, the most disgusting house that you can ever possibly be in. But what broke their heart is that there was a cage that was in that house and that is where this lady severely autistic child slept investigators learned that the nonverbal ch- girl spent nights locked in that enclosure uh, which had a blanket and a pillow inside Doss allegedly told police that her daughter would scream in the mornings until she was removed from that cage <sighs> so this poor little girl and the other two siblings were uh luckily taken from that home and the mom was arrested and, and placed with a twenty thousand dollar bond but man 000. if you don't know how to take care of children don't have children there is help out there there is help there is people that will help 
There's people out there with a bigger heart than what you might have. Let them take care of that child. But to put your kid in a cage where they pooped and peed all over themselves like an animal in a, in a, in a shelter, come on, man. Even if she's autistic, I think that little girl knows what's going on. Like, it's just very unfortunate. It just... I mean, as you're, mention as you're mentioning this whole thing, I'm looking, I'm literally looking for our dog cage that's never closed because she knows what she, but just, wow. Um, why? But wow, props to the neighbor. Yeah, I'm props glad they called. Props to the neighbor. Oh my goodness. She, you know, most people after they try, you know, like I did my part. I did. Mm -hmm. Wow. Props to her for continuing to call the cops and having this issue taken care of. Cause yeah, you know, if it went any, if it prolonged any longer, it may be a dead body in there that they could have found that this woman truly, 100%. I feel has saved two children. Yeah. Wow. Good Three children. The it was the Three autistic child and the two siblings. Yeah. Oh, wow. Three children. So, I just don't understand how, I mean, if you're doing that to your artist, I'm sure you're not taking care of the other two either. They're probably the ones who has to go and console the other child because mm -hmm. mother pretty much is fed up. Yeah. That little girl was treated like sloth the in the Goonies. Her. It's terrible. Baby Ruth. But yeah, I think somebody needs to send a big thank you to her something because that woman has to have three children. Yeah, that's that's a shame. Well, yeah, let's, let's do up. another wash your no. ass and brush your teeth. But this this wash your ass and brush your teeth is. Do people need to step out and mind their own business or should the outside uh, get involved? OK, so with this situation, there was a 12 year old who was impregnated by a 24 year old. So the 12 year old and the 24 year old, they go to the hospital so that the 12 year old can give birth. And the whole time the, the staff is like, uh, where's the parents of this 12 year old child? And they found out that um, the, uh, the the 24 year old was the dad. So the 24 year old, his name was Juan de Jara. Uh, and he was arrested and charged with first degree rape um, for, you know what I'm saying, getting a 12 year old pregnant. But the family knew. And the mom was also arrested for child neglect and for basically letting this happen. But the whole family knew that this was going on. So there is parental consent. You know what I'm saying? And it's easy to, to judge this situation from the outside looking in. But if this is their environment, you know what I'm saying? If in their mind they don't see what's wrong with this, can society step in and tell them what to do? You know, once upon a time, Little House on the Prairie days, girls were having babies at 12 years old. It, you know, that wasn't a far-fetched thing. It's just what, what would happen. Um, but in this modern society, it's easy to judge this. But my question is, do we butt out if the mom and the rest of the family, every, they, they had a baby shower, you know what I'm saying? So everybody knows what's happening. This is not a shock. So does the system step out and we mind our own business or do we intervene and uh, assume that we're helping this, this little girl out? Because now the father of her child is in jail. Her mother's in jail. Now she's in protective custody, her and her babies. Like it's, it's a, it's a bigger mess now than what the sloppy mess was from before. So I like to get, it's kind of weird coming in from the other one where it says, you know, do you intervene clearly intervening in the previous wash your yeah. ass, brush your teeth was okay. But yes, in this part also, yeah, yeah, stop that. Yeah, stop that. Because you are saying, oh, by okaying this, just because a parent, the family was aware of it, this is still a pedophilic action. Word. This, this, no, you should not be looking at, a grown adult should not be looking at a 12-year-old child in that manner. And she mm -hmm. is not ready. You are she is being abused. She does not know what she has entered into. She just knows that everybody's okay with it around her. She is being abused. 
These are all adults making decisions for this young lady who should be playing dolls with her friends. Word. You know, doing those TikTok dances and things like that. She should not be having sex. Which, if she's a 12-year-old giving birth, this has been happening way before. Yep. And that's a no. And, and mm -hmm. you really need to check this family out because they themselves are probably doing these things that other people don't know about. Yeah, they, they are because... That young lady's father is also in jail uh, for unrelated first degree rape conviction, also. So it seems yes. like it's in that bloodline to just everybody. Everybody that's connected. Yeah, the girl needs her help. Her and her child needs to be taken. I mean, she needs to be fostered by some loving parents that will be taken care Word. of. Hopefully, she will not be split from her child, but that's most likely in her future. But that family that she is with the guy that she is with they are not good for her I, i'm sorry that's just my opinion on my part with not knowing anything other than what i just have heard uh -huh. they are not good for her they have not been good for her the situation that she's gone through that pain she is not ready for that her body is still growing and they are see this type of alteration that they're going through that's the part where like humans take care of yourselves Mm -hmm. Well, the lucky thing is that as both the girl and the baby are are okay, and the mom and the the baby daddy are now in jail. So, hopefully, you know, what I'm saying there's a, a a a bright light at the end of that tunnel. But man, what a situation to be born into! Like, jeez, sounds messy. It just sounds messy. I mean. Or no. Consent. I mean, even if there is a consent that the parent can give in, there's got to be an age. 16, I thought, was the age where they could, you know, be like, okay, she's mature enough. And I'm thinking parents give consent because they see their children to be, oh, okay, you're more mature than the rest mm -hmm. of the kids. You don't give consent to but just some teenager who doesn't even know to make their beds after they get out of bed, who doesn't even know to you know, brush their teeth without having told to, like, no, you can't wear that. They don't I mean, know to, in my opinion, I did not know to make correct decisions. And I was pretty straightforward. And yet I still made so many mistakes up until later parts of my life that, no, this is, this is like abuse. Like Simone Biles would went into abuse. That way. This is abuse in a just complete different, like downward like spiral at least there was some light like gold and you know something at the end of it i don't know what could possibly come out of a 12 year old giving birth to a baby other than 13 year old now giving birth to a second 14 year old giving birth to her third and eventually she's just a baby making machine with no skills i guess the worst thing is uh for. you gotta judge if i'm judging by the way they look i am not surprised not like like not at all it looks like a heroin infested neighborhood where your 12 year old daughter gets pregnant by the mexican neighbor and that just looks like everything is okay like it's yeah. judging by the pictures i'm not surprised at all uh we got a couple more minutes i wanted to show this trailer because this looks like it's going to be an amazing uh a movie that's going to be coming to hbo uh check this out this looks Awesome. I'm Ellis Hayes, this one. Welcome to Soul. James Baldwin. Earth, Wind & Fire. Stevie Wonder, Nikki Giovanni. Harry Belafonte. Al Green. Yo, this is every day. Can you imagine what Soul would have been like for a 20-year run? Los Angeles, Detroit, Newark. Cities across the country were erupting. There were so few positive African-American images on television. We needed to reimagine ourselves on this American landscape. Got any ideas, fellas? Live and in color from New York City, Soul. I'm Ellis Hayes, the producer of Soul, and we are happy to have you with us this evening. Ellis was a gardener, and he cultivated all of these people. Black voices speaking to the problems of our time. Ellis said, if we're going to do something for the black community, it's got to be a lot deeper, jazzier, even more controversial. It's about time I hear something besides blondes have more fun. <laughs> Ellis already knew that black culture led, didn't pull. Baby. Be still, peace, be still. Every superstition. revolutionary. 
the conversations he had between writers and poets. Of course you can lie to me. Treat me the same way you would treat him. I can't treat you. You must. Treat. You grin at him all day long. You come on when I catch hell. Because I love you, I get least of you. Fake it with me. I asked him, why are you having Rasan Roland Kirk on? He said, because he's crazy. That program is so beyond its time that it was giving TV exposure to activist revolutionary. They want me to go to Vietnam to shoot some black folks that never lynched me, never called me nigga. You're so much more than Blacks all around the country say, yes. Stay high, suck a chump. You could do anything you wanted. The FBI was very, very disturbed by that. How did we get rid of it? I said, Ellis, this is a piece of history. Let's fight for it. There exists, as far as I know, no TV program that deals with my culture so completely, so freely, and so beautifully. There is nothing, nothing we cannot do. Black seeds keep on growing. It is nothing but evolution and monsters. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to uh, to watching that. It looks amazing. And one of the biggest things about that is that the host of that show was openly gay during a time where it was really, really demonized uh, to be gay. But he had that monumental program, and it, it looks awesome. So I'm definitely looking forward to watching that when it comes out on the 1st. Um, we are at the 11 o'clock hour. This is a big shout-out to Frederick Taylor. Thank you for joining us earlier uh, on the program here on the Unique and Cheese Show. We are on vacation next week so there'll be no unique and cheese show next friday we are on vacay uh miss kk anything you want to say before we get out of her thank you everybody for joining us and yeah we appreciate frederick, frederick being here all day and we miss cheese so yeah oh cheesy we know, got a job uh, cheese i know the vibe is definitely different a little dry a little wet i don't know you wet but thank you for joining us this Friday, once again, we really, really appreciate you. Please continue to keep safe. And we really would like for you to return on a following Friday. Thank you. Thank you guys for joining us this morning for the Unique and Cheese Show. Have an amazing weekend. Yes, once again, we're off next week. Uh, you guys uh, have a wonderful one. And we will see you next time, her, on the Unique and Cheese Show. You can always watch the playbacks on Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, if you don't mind subscribing to our YouTube channel, that would be awesome. we got to get our numbers up. Turn up. We miss your nephew, too, Aunt Christy. Aunt Christy. All righty, you guys. You having a wonderful weekend. It was It's hot already. <laughs>